If I traded it all. Welcome back, everyone. I now have with me Gary Hees, and he's the Executive Clinical Director of Decision Point. Welcome back to the show. You've been on one, more, one time before. <laughs> Welcome back. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you all do. Oh, gotcha. Uh, well, uh, as far as I go, this is my second career. Uh, I made a decision to change careers in my mid-40s uh, and went into behavioral health. I love it, and it's an absolute life passion to me. Uh, what we do is uh, treat drug and alcohol addiction issues, uh, but we take a very clinical look at it, and we assess much more in detail than your um, average treatment center might. Now, you're located in Prescott, and the website, I want everybody to write these things down, because this is so more very, very informational for everybody. Maybe it's you, maybe it's someone that you know, we all know somebody who's dealing with some sort of a, an addiction and we're going to talk about something today that's a little different uh, that brings you to addiction as well but it's decisionpointcenter.com and uh, you can call them direct and that is at toll free 877-77-ADMIT now I want to know what we're going to talk about today let's go ahead and do it Okay, today we wanted to talk about the absolute connection between childhood physical and sexual abuse and developing an addiction. Uh, there's more and more research on it, and the correlation is very, very high. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how does that happen to somebody. I mean, a lot of people out there, as we're finding out, have been sexually abused in one way or another, and not everybody has that happen. I hear you. Some of the literature now is actually suggesting a correlation as high as 90% uh, between doing that. And the way that comes about is um, there are developmental stages that a child will go through. And when those are interrupted uh, by something as profound and horrific as physical or sexual abuse occurring with the child, literally the development of that that child, the normal development, is altered uh, almost permanently until some detail work can be done on it. Rather than being pro-social, that is, seeking out connection, things such as that, attachment is impacted. That is, their ability and their need to be or want to be connected with and around other people. Uh, their relationships uh, tend to be very, very negatively affected because basically their view of the world has become one that the world is a dangerous place and that it's very dangerous to trust. Well, you know, it makes mm -hmm. sense because, you know, a lot of people, I'm just going to say this. I don't know if I'm right. Sure. I'm no director mm -hmm. of, a, of, a, of a, a clinical place sure. like you. But to me, they're hurting inside. Absolutely. And, you know, even though it may not be right in their, uh, right in front of their mind, but in the back of their mind, they're somewhere, mm -hmm. they're acting out, they're doing things, and they're hurting. And so when they find something, I'm guessing, like alcohol or drugs, that makes mm -hmm. them feel good, they don't want to stop. It's absolutely that way, Carol. You really couldn't have said it. Uh, you really couldn't have said it better. Uh, that pain is there. Uh, that feeling of not fitting in. In fact, the most common uh, self-limiting beliefs we hear people who have been victims of uh, physical or sexual abuse uh, cite are: "I feel worthless. I feel like I'm a failure." And consequently, uh, somewhere in their life, they bump up against alcohol or drugs, any of these substances, and when they consume those, uh, all of a sudden they feel differently. All of a sudden they feel uninhibited and more glib and more like they fit in. Uh, the pain is really suppressed by the use of those substances. And the wonderful way our brain works gets totally perverted in that process because a, a brain under that influence with that background of abuse 
looks at that substance and says, oh my gosh, I finally found the answer. I don't have to feel like I'm worthless. All I have to do is use a pill or a drink or a drug or a joint, any of those things. Hmm, amazing. Now, when you mm-hmm. are uh, doing your assessments, what does it look like at mm-hmm. Decision Point? Because that's what you do. They have to come there and they have to talk to you, whether it's you or someone first. What is the process? Gosh, it is a two-week long process. We look at, at nutrition. We look at family structure. We look at what has their educational background been. We have full psychiatric evaluation uh, going on with an MD, and we utilize a licensed psychologist giving a battery of tests, one of which specifically looks for and tests for trauma. If we see it come up, then when we derive a treatment plan, we make sure that we address the condition that most likely started the addiction as well as the fact that the person has developed habits around drinking or using drugs. So when I listen to you, and I know the first time you came on, I said the same thing to myself. You're about getting to the root of the problem and not just with, you know, uh, drugs, just to give them something that's going to get them off of it. So now you're off of it. Now you won't be taking that anymore. You won't have that uh, those cravings anymore. You get down to the nitty gritty. We absolutely do. And uh, Carol, if you have listeners out there uh, and more and more people have someone in their family who has developed an addictive, uh, an addictive behavior or an actual addiction, if those people are out there and even if their loved one has been to multiple instances of trying residential treatment, of trying IO, uh, IOP, which is intensive outpatient, and it hasn't worked, I urge you, do not give up on your loved one. Call us. Give us a chance to do detailed assessment and let us get to the bottom of it. To do anything less is literally to put a Band-Aid on a gash. The number to call them is 877-77-ADMIT. So 877-77-ADMIT. The website is decisionpointcenter.com. So basically, all of this that you're talking about is really helping people go from, you know, uh, you know, trying different things like, you know, dealing with what they've had in the past, right? <laughs> and then now, obviously, being de- dealing with what their substance abuse is now. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. If both phases aren't addressed, what you will see is a person who basically approaches it, uh, the old saying is, put a plug in the jug and it'll all be all right. And that doesn't work out. So at your facility, mm-hmm. how many? Because, you know, you t- I'm wor- sure you talk to a lot of them that oh, come yeah. in. Um, would you say the percentages for you that most people are uh, have been traumatized in some way or another like that? People may find this hard to believe, but anecdotally, I would say 85 or more percent. Well, we certainly know mm-hmm. that it's happening, and we all know that a lot of people, they, well, I don't know, they, they don't want to admit that they have a problem, too. Would you say that that's true, too? Well, absolutely. Who wants to admit that something has taken control of their life instead of them being in charge of their life? And so the loved ones, when you say this to them, and they say, I implore you, please don't give up on them, mm-hmm. do a lot get to that point? Uh, We have worked with multiple families where the family was ready to just stop. And in many cases, we've identified trauma. We've even identified uh, persons with Asperger's or on the autism spectrum that in truth aren't resistant to treatment. Those conditions are there and have never been addressed. So, okay, they've never been addressed. How is it possible for these people, when you're addressing this with them, that they can handle have this long-term sobriety? Absolutely. It can develop into long-term sobriety, and that's the difference with Decision Point. We're not about, let's get you sober. We're about, let's use sobriety as a way for you to have the life you always imagined you could have. So how does that work? Because a lot of people out there, first of all, I think as a loved one, we really find it hard to uh, confront 
mm-hmm. you know, what would you suggest for them to do now that they're hearing this? And we all know that a lot of people out there, we know someone, if it's not us ourselves, a loved one, someone in our family is dealing with issues like this. And it could have been started just with something like this. Well, but, for one thing, ask for professional help. I guarantee you there's not a parent on earth right now who came to being a parent equipped to deal with someone developing an addiction. So ask for professional help. They're out there. Call us. Even if we can't provide the help you need, we'll direct you where you can find it. Again, that number is 877-77-ADMIT, and it's decisionpointcenter.com. Now, at your center, tell them all the different things that you can help them with. Any kind of uh, addiction? I mean, you know, because there's a lot of different ones. Almost, truly, almost any kind of addiction, including what we call process addiction, such as love addiction, that is uh, unhealthy relationships and going from one to another, sexual addiction, uh, almost any of those things uh, fall into the general area of what we would call an obsessive compulsive disorder, and we deal with them as such. Again, that number is 877-77-ADMIT, and it's Decision Point Center. Dot com. I'm going to let you have the floor to continue what you want to tell them. Ah, uh, gotcha. Guys, uh, the biggest thing that I want you to understand is don't walk away and don't give up. Uh, it can be frustrating. It's absolutely frightening. I'm a parent myself. I experienced some of these things with my children uh, growing up. Uh, seek professional help and don't give up, but be very, very conscientious about doing research uh, into the program you consider putting your loved one in. And talking about physical and sexual abuse, this is a great time to be talking about it. So many people out there, they have been, and they've been afraid to have a voice. And mm-hmm. you do have a voice. And there might be something that you're doing out that you don't like that you do. And mm-hmm. it could be something that is uh, can be helped. And all you have to do is make that call. Absolutely. If you're out there and you have experienced physical or sexual abuse yourself hear me now this is not about you it is something that happened to you not something that you did the number, call us number is 877-77-ADMIT it's decisionpointcenter.com